Good morning friends, it's Alexa again. I have a bang of you guys today. This is probably one of the most important videos I'll ever make. Um, and also for you to understand what is possible and how to actually craft good items because it's one of the key things in this game is of course items and not just finding them but also making them even better. Many builds revolve around great items and the ability to make them even better. So, I think, personally, I think there are two ways to use the crafting, like the forge over here, right? Um, or like crafting items in general. And one is when you go through the campaign, that you just make the, the random items you find better, right? So they actually help you going through the campaign faster. And the other way is in the late game to absolutely maximize the items you have to the absolute top level. Because you won't do this in the campaign. In the campaign, you really just forge, you just throw everything into the items. And there's a bunch of cool runes I'm going to show you. Um, you can use for that as well. And there's also, of course, late game crafting. This is, by the way, not... This video is not about the legendaries. How to craft these. We are only doing regular items with the forge. So this is for beginners. Or just if you don't know what is everything possible with the forge. There's a lot of things I didn't know either um, for quite a while in this game especially the runes i've never used some of these and they're actually pretty good so um yeah we're gonna also go over the glyphs all of that there is a lot so let's dive right into it the first way is very simple right you open you, you hit f on your keyboard that opens the forge very simple by the way if you haven't watched my general item video the absolute guide on items you should watch this first so you know what the affixes are Right, what affixes are, what they mean, what the rarities are. I'm not going to go over this in this video. This is truly only about crafting. Okay, so let's talk about the affix tiers. Right, you, I covered this a little bit already in the other video, but basically, from one to five is the max you can actually forge in this forge. Okay, it says it here underneath the affix. This is a tier five. This is a tier four. This is a tier three. You start with tier 1, where there is one affix on it. And with each forging you do with a shard, you increase that. So for example, if I want to increase the poison, no, the critical strike chance, which is tier 3, I click on this, it automatically adds the correct shard that is necessary for this, which would be a critical strike chance shard. And then I can upgrade it by clicking here. Now, key thing. You need these shards, you find these through the campaign or like through, through playing the game a lot. And as you can tell in your crafting materials, I have 17,864 shards. Um, so I played a little bit. You will end up with a lot throughout the campaign and you need a lot because there is many. If you click on crafting materials, you can see the ones that you have. Um, and the number behind that tells you how many you have of this very shard. For example, I have 800 with health. Okay, you can see this. Hold up. Yeah, I'm in a little bit in the way, but it's fine. 555 necrotic resistance. And there's also a few we don't have many of. For example, here, level of infernal shade. I only got three. So this means if I have level of infernal shade as an affix on an item, I can only increase it three times, so I can't even get it to the max tier five. So you, you want to find these. And I'm going to show you how you actually get more of these uh, from your items. Oh, this has zero. Okay, I already did something with that. You see, this has 33 forging potential. It's in the implicit, right? With that emboss on it. That means... Well, this, this number is a bit irrelevant. Let's just say the higher the number, the better, obviously. And 33 is okay, but it's on the lower end. Okay? The rarer an item is, and the rarer or like the higher the area you found it is, the more likely you are to get higher forging potential. And forging potential is very important because without it, you can't craft anything on the item. For example, if I use this one that has zero, even though this is a tier two affix, I cannot increase this anymore because there's no forging potential left. I can do nothing to this item anymore. Okay, I can't even reroll um, values. This is done. This is now set. This is why I want to have a lot of forging potential so you can actually do something. See, you see with these arrows, that means I can increase those. 
the higher the affix is, the more expensive the craft is. But it is still a roll, as it says down here. From 1 to 18, that's how much it costs, forging potential. And it even says how much is remaining, when this is pretty much the same as here. Um, the higher the tier, the more expensive the rolls generally are. So if you craft a tier 4, tier 5 um, affix, you are more likely to go closer to the 18 instead of the 1. Okay? So just bear in mind. And when you, when you run out of forging potential again, then uh, it's this is done. Very simple. Now, there is something called a critical success craft, which means this is a random occurrence when you upgrade something. You can run a critical success. That means that upgrade you did there from tier 4 to tier 5, for example, is completely free. It doesn't even cost the shard. Interestingly enough, you don't even lose a shard for that. And it also upgrades one other random affix with a tier 4 free. So the critical successes, they are great. You also see this, it's showing here critical success. And you have this cool sound effect, it does. And uh, this, but it's a random occurrence, it's completely random, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But this is cool if you get it, can but, but sometimes can also ruin your life. For example, if you want to reroll an affix and then the critical success actually rolls it into tier 5, then you can't do it anymore, right? Because as soon as it's tier 5, as you can tell, you can't change it anymore. Right, um, you also see over here. How many FX shards you actually have for these, alright? So you don't have to click on it. No, you just see I have 150 health regen, 500 poison resistance. Very, very helpful. For example, this one still has the tier 4. Sometimes this is, if you have this already... Okay, let's actually do it. I, I sh show you. If we go here, you can see there is this arrow, meaning I can upgrade this. If you click on it, this arrow vanishes. And sometimes you forget that you still are able to do this, even though everything is orange. So sometimes I'm like, wait. Should I be able to? Oh, yeah, I can. So whenever the upgrade affix button is green, or like uh, purple, you can upgrade. But sometimes it's a little bit confusing. So, um, yeah, the shards, again, as I said, you have them all here. You can even search for them, prefixes, suffixes. If you craft, and here it says currently, which are, which are currently applied. And if you have one that doesn't have four, actually, maybe we'll, we'll find one. Let me check. This one has three. That's good. Then you go here. You click like this one only has three, right? And then this one is empty. You click on the plus. And then the great thing is there is available to be applied. It only shows the affixes now on here that you can actually put on the left side. These, for example, down here, these are suffixes. They must go here. And since this is full, you cannot apply these. Okay. This is also why it says cannot be applied. If you, if you would do it here, you couldn't apply the prefixes. Very simple. Left is prefix, right is suffix, as I mentioned before. So this... I mean, you, you can't do this wrongly because the game doesn't allow you to add others uh, in this anyway. Only the ones that are bright white you can actually apply. You can choose one, whichever you want, like cold damage, for example, and then you would add it to it. This one, for example, is 46 and also says add affix instead of upgrading. Now, let's talk about the glyphs for a second. I think we have the affixes covered mostly. The glyphs you find here in this thing in between, basically. You click on it and then you have five to choose. The glyph of hope is really the one you use the most. If you... Even if you add or if you upgrade, you always want to have this... Just keep that in. It also stays in with your upgrade. It says, modifies the outcome of a craft, granting it a 25% chance to have no forging potential cost. So, 1 in 4 basically is your chance to not lose any forging potential for each time you run it. For example, if I add this now, this was minus 5 forging potential, so it didn't work. Didn't work again. Okay, we're not lucky today. There we are. Glyph of Hope preserved forging potential. So now I did not lose any forging potential. I lost four Glyphs of Hope already. Even if it doesn't work with the Gly Glyph of Hope, you still lose one of these. Okay? And now I have... How many do I have? 300. I actually should find some more, I guess. So, um... 
you usually have enough of these to and you use these all the time right always if you're forging use the glyph of hope see we actually upgraded this so much as now it's actually 24 potential forging potential we can pay for this so the higher you get the crazier but you want to use this most of the times okay the other one is the glyph of chaos also an important one but it can fuck you over quite badly what it does is randomly changes the upgraded affix to a different one that can spawn on that item type it cannot change the prefix into a suffix or vice versa i mean what it does is very simple now this is cold damage and it says here it's red now upgrade and reroll this means when i now click this with this glyph in here this will not be cold damage anymore it will be any other affix that is possible on this side of the item meaning it will be any other prefix because it's on the left side if i do it here with the glyph of chaos it will be any other suffix other than reduced bonus damage taken. Okay, we can do this for now. So you see, this is now uh, damage taken from critical strikes reduced. Now we reroll. It's now all attributes. See, this changed it entirely. <clears throat> the good thing is, now it actually doesn't stay in the upgrade mode because you want to check first, okay, this is actually what I want. Another key thing is, if you use this, you always pay your fortune potential because you're not using the Glyph of Hope key thing and again there is a lot of um if we actually go in the crafting materials in the suffixes there's a lot of suffixes this can choose from right so this is a very random way to change the affixes on an item but it can sometimes be really good okay like for example if you have a cold weapon that does cold damage but one of the affixes is ignite chance you can try to reroll it with this glyph then it can become frostbite chance and this has happened to me a bunch of times so this is a great way to sometimes try to change it although we're going to go over in the in the best practices later because there's a better way also to do these things but um this is a one way to do it then we have the glyph actually um yeah this was just the example we have the glyph of order this is also a key thing what does it say Modifies the outcome of a craft when upgrading an affix. Prevents the roll of an affix within its range, changing when it is upgraded. That's a bit cryptical. What this actually means is... If you look at this. For example, the cold damage, right? It's now 115%. If you hit Alt and Control, it shows you, under, under the increased cold damage, the tier of that affix. We know this, tier 4. But also the range we rolled. Because there's always a range in rolling the affixes, right? The lowest would be 99% and the max roll would be 125%. We have 115%, so we're somewhere in the middle. If you, for example, have the max roll on tier 4, 125%, you want to keep that. So you want to have the max roll on tier 5. And you can do this with the Glyph of Order. If we now lose, use the Glyph of Order, as we have in here, and we now upgrade the cold damage, and let's say we have the 125%, then it will go to tier 5 with the max roll possible. That would be, I don't know what it is, 150 or something. So the glyph of order is if you have one affix already in a max roll or in a very high roll, and you want to upgrade it and you want to keep that max roll, then you use the glyph of order on that very thing to stay in the max roll. Because if you don't use it, and you now just use, for example, the glyph of hope, for the all attributes, for example, which is, I mean, all attributes is always the same, so cold damage. It could also go to the low roll on tier 5. You have tier 5 then, but you only go to like 101%, so you're actually worse off than you were before, because you did a low roll, right? That could be happening. So this is where the Glyph of Order can be very useful when you are maxing out your affixes. Then we have the Glyph of Despair. This is also an interesting one. It says, has a chance to seal an affix instead of upgrading it. The sealed affix is moved to its own slot, leaving its old slot open for you to add a new affix. Um, it doesn't say what the chance is, funnily enough, because I don't know what the chance actually is. Did I write it down anywhere? I did not. Great preparation, Alexander. Great. Okay, there's a chance. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. It didn't work. Let's try it here. Okay, we were not lucky with this one. Feels bad. How about this? There we go. See? It happened. 
affix sealed. Okay, we had the chance to seal the affix. And now what you see is this one, the poison resistance was over here. It now moved on here at tier 4. So it didn't get upgraded. It stayed the same tier, but it moved into this thing. And the great thing about this is now this item can have five affixes other than just four because now it can add this one. Right, it can now add, for example, I'm going to throw this out anyway, so who cares? Health. And look, now it has five affixes on it. And you see the fifth one, that sealed one, is this sort of light gray beige color. And that is what the Glyph of Despair does. These are pretty rare. I only have 40, as you can tell. You don't find these often, so you're, you really want to only use this when you max out your items in the late game. Right? If you think, okay, I really need one more affix on this to really make this item pop. Then you run this, but again, you, it's just a chance, and I think it's somewhat low. It's probably something like 20% or something that it happens. But that's what it does. Just seals the affix on the item, and it can't be changed anymore. It can't be rerolled. It can't be destroyed, I think. Yep. Um, because this rune would also remove affixes. It can, you can't change this anymore. It's sealed there. It's set. It is what it is. Then we have the Glyph of Insight. Changes the prefix into an experimental affix. Only works on gloves, boots, and belts, and does not work if the item already has an experimental affix. So, what does this do? Um, for example, if we have a regular... i max this one out. Shit. Okay, we need another item. So we're gonna f uh, throw this one out, because it sucks anyway. Let's use... I don't know. Um, let's use this, for example. health region now what this does is very simple how many do i actually have of these just five damn it anyway gonna use it for you guys because why not uh oh yeah this doesn't work uh, never mind i was smoking crack we need gloves or boots so let's run i don't know i should have prepared this better but yeah whatever let's use this now, if I use this, I can turn this into an experimental affix. Prefix, sorry, only works on prefixes. So what is this? You can only use a prefix and you can turn it into an experimental one. Experimental are these, right? Oh, you can't see this, can you? This one. For volatile zombies summoned on potion use and 44% increased minion damage. This is the experimental affix. These drop from the exiled mages, right? Um, you see these rune prisons and when you fight them, they drop these... Ex uh, experimental items it's only ever boots belts or gloves and this glyph also only works on these so what this does is if i do this there we are it is now experimental minions transport with traversal skills so this is now a experimental item or it has experimental thing and the great thing is as you can tell i changed an exalted one into an experimental one so now i have an exalted and experimental affix on this item, which is very great. Again, the one you add only apply to the item you use, because boots, for example, like the minions teleported around you, this can only be on boots. So um, you can look this up in the, the wikis, I don't know, I have it on top of my head right now. Which one can only be with boots, and there is also the belts. Belts can have the traversal skill cooldowns, mana gain the potion use, Volatile Zombies Summoned. I think these are the three it can has, have. Oh no, under Ward DK Threshold. These are the ones you have. The Boots have the Frenzy after Traversal Skill. Ward Gained after Traversal Skill. Haste. And what we just had was the Minion Damage, I believe. Gloves have Armor Mitigation. Health Loss Per Second and Ward. Ward Gain on Kill. And Dodge Rating. Yeah, I think these are the ones. If I'm not mistaken, that's all of it. Yeah. So, if you... If you have a, if you have boots, for example, in your forge, like I have, and you run the glyph of insight, this can only become one of these four that can be on experimental boots. Okay, it cannot have any experimental one from the glass, for example. That does not work. Again, it only works on prefixes, and you can, as it says, have only one experimental affix on the boots. So this is really absolute late game. If you want to have the specific. Like, for example, the minions teleported around you after use is very great with the Rare Flood, for example, or minion builds. And you have great boots with exalted 
uh, suffixes or affixes and you want to have one that is kind of just meh you want to have this on your boots then you can use this to make sure that is what it's on it but again this is random right and you can't change this anymore after it's done this is entirely random so this could also be a bad one there is some some luck involved in that but there's also a rune which with which you can do this even better so let's go to the runes actually you can keep this in here uh, these are when you click down here these are the runes okay and let's start with the first one the rune of shattering that's a simple one destroys an item creating a random number of affix shards containing its powers so if i run this on this one i will get the shards for health regen and armor reduced bonus damage from crits and uh, not this one because it doesn't exist if it had one like okay let's use this that's easier i gain all these shards from it but a random number of it, as it says. Um, creating a random number of affix shards containing its parts, yeah. So you don't know if you get one for the tier six, or if you get six, for example, right? Or if you get one from the all attributes, or five. So this is random. You do this if you find, I don't know, a magic item that has four affix on it, on it, right? A rare, rather. And you, you want to have more melee fire damage, for example, because you only have five. And you find this, you shatter it, you gain a melee fire damage, affix shard. And through this, throughout the playing of the game, you can build up this, this whole crafting materials to a massive amount. You do this by shattering them. Or oh, that's one way, I should say. It's not the most efficient way, but it's one way to gain all the affixes on this item, for example. I'm not going to do this because this is a good one. But actually, I could destroy this one. Yeah, why not? Let's run this. Okay. We're gonna destroy this. With, you can also click here, by the way, and get the rune here. Or you click on this. Same thing. Now I'm gonna shatter this, and you will see on the top left what I gain. See? Void resistance shards 5, 4, and 1 lightning damage shard, even though it was tier 5 or something. So this was a low roll, the other ones were quite high rolls. These were immediately added to my forge, and the item is gone, as you can tell. It's it vanished. It is now completely gone. You shouldn't do this too much with exalts, by the way, but um, for for the for the video. The next one is Rune of Refinement. What does it say? Rerolls the values of all affixes on an item within their tiers. It's very simple. This is tier 1 health region. If we click on it again, it says the range is 5% to 15%. We have 8%. If I now refine with that rune, this reroll. So let's do that. It's 8% now. Refine it. Now it's 7%. So it's worse. <laughs> it is random. Okay. So this was bad. It was very bad indeed. And it also uses fortune potential. So the rule of refinement I don't use very much to be honest. Because it uses it on all of them. I'm not a big fan of them. If I could choose, choose to do it only on one FX that would be great. But it rerolls all of them so this can be a bad roll. Just so you know, you can do this and you can have a max roll with it. You can play around with it if you want. But I'm not a big fan of that. But this is already all there is to it. You have the rune of removal. This is an important one. Removes a random affix on an item, returning a number of shards equal to its tier. And that is the key thing. It removes the number of shards equal to its tier. So if you find a... For example, this one. I want to have armor and reduced bonus damage from crits, right? This is also uh, affixed, uh, exalted, sorry. So, meaning, if I run the rune of removal, and I'm lucky and it removes this one, then I'll gain six affix shards for this. We can actually try this. Okay, it actually worked right away. See, six armor reduced bonus damage shards sent to forge. This was lucky because it's random which one it removes, so it could have also removed the health region. But it did the one I wanted, now I have six shards for that, great. This is, I think, a better way to get the affixes you want from the items you find. If you find a rare item in the in the playthroughs and you want to have exactly the health region tier 6 that is or tier 5 that is on it, using the rune of removal is better. Bear in mind, you only do this on items you find and you don't want to use because you destroy them in the way, pretty much, because it uses fortune potential. So, even though you remove all these affixes, we can do it again, right? Now I got health region, 1, because it was tier 1. Now I have a lot of space to add stuff, of course. 
but I'm already down on 29 Fortune Potential, so I likely won't be able to add all these affixes. Right? Also, nice addition. You, you see, there's only one suffix. We actually have to add one. Let's use one I don't use much. And only then does it add the second one. Okay, you can always add two ones, but you gotta put on one first and then it adds the second one. But yeah, that's what um, the Rune of Removal does. It's a more efficient way of getting the affixes you want over the Rune of Shattering. You only have, you usually find way more from these anyway. So um, you can choose what you want, but these two are to do that. Rune of Discovery. That's great in campaign. That's a very great um, rune you use by playing through the campaign. If we can't talk, it's difficult. Adds random to one affixes to all empty affix slots on an item. So basically what it does, it already shows by how it is highlighted here. Um, you can also add the glyph to this. We can do this. This re adds random affixes to these. And we have vitality and dodge rating gained from that. And the key thing is... Um, yes, I also didn't even need this. I realized the Glyph of Hope, so this was kind of a waste. Um, because it does not use Fortune Potential to do that. This is why it's so great in the campaign if you find a rare item, or if you find a random item and it only has like two slots on it, but it's a good one. And you just want to run the Rune of Discovery, add some affixes to it for free, then you can upgrade those or reroll them. When you play your arts through the campaign or just leveling them, it's not that important to min-max the items. You just want to gain a bunch of cool stats on it. You don't have to min-max like you do later, so this is great there. Especially because the second line it says here has an increased chance of rolling rarer affixes. So you are much more likely to get better affixes this way than if you put them on yourself or if you find items. So this is great in the campaign or if you're leveling your arts and you have just a... Uh, an item that isn't full, use that, it doesn't cost any um, fortune potential and it might add some really cool affixes to it. Very simple, very great. And if the rune of shaping, that's very simple, rerolls all implicits on an item. The implicits, you know, are the ones at the top. It says 53 armor and a 15% increased movement speed. It doesn't reroll the fortune potential, that would be funny, but it doesn't do that. So we can try that, that's 15% and 53, so we shape it. And it is now... Okay, 53 armor stayed the same, but it's 30% movement speed, so it's less. Again, it is random. Okay? It could be bad. And it also still uses fortune potential. But of course, you can run the glyph and be lucky with that, like in this case. Oh, it's 14%. The armor... Oh yeah, key thing. You want to check with Alt and Control. The armor range, for example, is 53 to 53. So there isn't much to reroll here. And the uh, movement speed was 13 to 15%. So doing the rune of shaping on this was actually kind of stupid. <laughs> but I want to show it anyway. Because the range is so minimal where it can actually roll something. We can look into this. I think this is better. Oh, it doesn't have fortune potential. This has duration of stuns. That's minus 10 to minus 20. So let's try it here. See, that's 90% now. Which is almost the max roll on that. Which is great. So this was a good one. The other ones is also movement speed also almost maxed pretty good. So in this case that was nice. But it does use fortune potential or a glyph of hope, so gotta be aware of that. Then we have a good one. The rune of ascendance. You wanna have these and these are super super rare to find. What they do is they turn an item into a, into a unique or set item. Yes, if I use this rune this will become unique boots or unique set item. But it can be any. And here's the key thing you want to know. Um, yeah, it doesn't keep any of the other affixes. It just turns it straight into the unique item. So, for example, if you, you can check this out on max roll, you go to your database. For example, you have you want to have the Rav Lord's Harbor. This helmet, you want to have that, right? This one. If you go scroll down, it says down here, Rune of Ascendancy Chance, 1 in 22. So if you have a helmet in here, let's say any helmet we have, this one. We throw that in here, and now I use the Rune of Ascendance on that, which I won't do because I only have 8. And this is also a good one. Doesn't matter, I'm going to show you guys, fuck it. 
If I run the rune of Ascendant, it turns into... The Ashen Crown, a mage helmet. It turned into a unique... And, but it's completely random. It's a 1 in 22 chance to get the one I wanted, okay? Because there's 22 helmets, unique helmets. So the more helmets are added into the game, the worse this rune becomes. <laughs> because then your chance to get the one you want is lower. Also, you, you shouldn't do this on exalted items, by the way. You can just use a random common helmet that has no affixes on it, just a white item. You use your rune of ascendance, it turns into a unique item. That's great, you can be lucky with it. I got actually this one <laughs> with the first try last time I did it. So I was lucky there. But there is a key thing to mention. If you use the rune of ascendance, there is a penalty for legendary potential. Right, this has one LP on it. You are less likely to get LP on an item if you use the Rune of Ascendance, which is kind of sad. So if you need the item with Rune of Ascendance on it, you are usually better off farming it in where you can ever find it. And you know you can see this here. For example, this one. Um, Black Sun, this is where you find it. But that's the Rune of Ascendance. So now we have this one. That Mage Helmet. Then we have Rune of Creation. That's a simple one. It just duplicates the item. Right? It doesn't work on uniques, right? I think. Yeah, can kind of forge uniques. Um, that would have been nice. No forge potential, so we can't do it. But what it would be doing is copy this as it is. But if you use this on a item that still has forging potential, like this one, because it says down here, it reduces the forging potential of both the original and the copy to zero. So if you wanna, if you are sure, okay, I created a insanely good item. I still have a little bit of forging potential left. One is enough. Then I, I want to have it twice for another character. You can use this. It duplicates it, but it uses, it loses all the um, forging potential. So that's important to know. I have never used this, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there will be a use case at some point. Then, we have the Rune of Research. Seals an experimental affix on the item. The affix is moved to its own slot, leaving its old slot open for you to add a new affix. This has two things. The first one is, this is what you see, what I did here. You can actually do it with this one. We seal it. Bam. This is now down here. And we were lucky. This is actually something I wanted to show in a second, but we were lucky here. Now, this is down here in the sealed slot, and I can add a new one. Like, for example... Strength. So now it has five affixes. Exactly what it did here, even though this is also an exalted one. So the glyph of uh, the rune of insight, rune of research, sorry, is very great for the exalted, uh, the experimental items. Man, these terms, I'm mixing them all up for the experimental items to make them even better, like it did with this one. Right? Very simple. But another key thing is with this rune, as it says below, it's just in this beige thing just randomly but it's a key thing when an experimental affix is sealed you have a chance to gain a glyph of insight this chance is higher for items with higher tier affixes but cannot exceed 45 percent so if you have an item that has pretty much all of it tier 5 or even exalt uh, like this one with tier 7 and there is one left with tier 2 and 3 which you're gonna upgrade with the rune of research then you have a 45% chance that this drops as it happened right now. It was a great thing this happened, so I can show you. The Glyph of Insight. So you can basically create them yourself, right? This, these ones again, so just so you know. Um, which changes a prefix into an experimental affix. So what you want to do is, if you want to have more of these, you need like, I don't know, if you have 20, you're fine. You don't need more than that. Maybe 10 is even enough. I rarely use these, so you just... You just get all your exalted items you have lying around and you use the rune of research which you find a lot by the way from the exalted mages use that and there is a chance didn't happen this time see a chance that the glyph of inside drops it didn't happen here um so you just some of these you don't even use and you want to throw away you throw in the rune of research until the glyph of inside drops and then you just throw them out because you don't need them anyway all right very simple now i have it here glyph of inside Okay. 
I think that is it. We have the runes, we have the affixes and the glyphs. Yeah, so let's talk about best practices. What you want to do and how. You always want to have the glyph of hope as a default, right? We, we mentioned this before. Um, unless, of course, you want to reroll, but make sure this is set whenever you do something. Because when you upgrade, it also stays in the double the critical success. So this went from tier 1 to tier 5 right away. We were lucky here. Um, so this didn't cause any fortune potential here. You want to keep this as sort of your base one always, okay? Very simple. As I said, the Room of Discovery is great in the campaign. Later, not so much. You don't use this later, but going through the campaign or leveling your arts, this is a great addition. You want to have this. As I mentioned, the Rune of Removal, I would highly recommend you use this over the Shattering in most cases. So now I got my tier 5 shards back again. Actually, I used only 2 shards and gained 5 back, so that was a net plus for me. I mean, you have 500, it doesn't matter. Um, yes, also, together with the Glyph, you want to use this over the Shattering Rune. Because it's random. We want to minimize random outcomes as much as possible, right? And now a very gimmicky one. If you have an item that has three good affixes, but one sucks boss. And it doesn't... Like, it's not exactly what you want at all. For example, we don't want to have the dodge ready. Because it sucks. We don't need it at all, okay? What most people will be doing is upgrade and reroll the Rune of Glyph of Chaos. But this could be very bad. It could just suck, okay? So you're probably better off running the Glyph of Despair. Uh, okay, I can't do this here because this is already sealed. So let's, for example, go with this. Um, Glyph of Despair here. For example, which one do we not want? Hold Resistance. Again, this has a chance to seal the affix instead of upgrading it. And the great thing is, if you, for example, absolutely hate this affix, re-rolling it now would turn it into tier 5, and then it maybe sucks even more. Okay, so it's better to use the Glyph of Despair. We were unlucky here. Maybe you're luckier than I am. In this case, this would be sealed, but then you have an entirely new slot for yourself ready that you can use from tier 1 to tier 5 for something you actually want there. Okay? So that's the key thing. This is where the Glyph of... Gly Glyph. Glyph of Despair, I think, is better than re-rolling because you gain, like, again, you remove the random component as much as possible, except for the chance of the Glyph of Despair happening, but you have a much higher chance than to actually put on the affix or suffix you want. All right, that was it for the crafting. That's a long video, I know, um, but there's so much to talk about with these things, so much to go over. Um, just check the chapters out below if you have any more questions about things. Let me know in the comments if something is still unclear. You need still help with something. Um, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if it helped you. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about even more important things in this game.